parts of selling. When it comes time to you giving your presentation, is always to be talking about the benefits of what your product or service offers, not just talking about the features. So the idea behind that is people ultimately buy on emotion, not on logic. So if you're giving them a bunch of numbers, it really doesn't mean that much to them. It's very difficult to connect emotionally with that. But if you're seeing what the product actually does and what the service does, how it can improve their life, how it can help them solve their problems, that's something that resonates with a customer. That's what they're going to buy. People don't buy features, they buy benefits. And the easiest way to remember that is features tell, benefits sell. That's a, just a handy way to remember. Always be talking about the benefits. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be mentioning the, the, the features, but the way you sell it by talking about benefits. Yeah. So does that mean features are marketing and benefits are sales? <coughs> if you're telling about the product, that's marketing? Well, marketing should, a great marketing should also be giving the idea of what the benefits are as well. But that's, yeah. But certainly in selling, it's absolutely about, it's all about the benefits. Another great way to remember it is there's a way, there's a book actually called So What? And the entire book is about selling benefits of a feature. And if someone says to you, they just throw out a feature, if you can say so what to it, it means you're really just giving a feature, you're not giving a benefit. <coughs> So just a, bless you. just a couple of examples are like a photocopy. If you say the copy prints 10 more pages per minute than the competition, you're going to say, so what? Does that really mean anything? <laughs> that, it, that it prints 10 more than, than, uh, than another copy. But if you talk about how it can save you time because it's doing that, that's the benefit of saving you time. And that's what people ultimately will buy. And it goes into a lot of psychology, but it's really about people buying on emotion, and then ultimately later they'll justify it by logic. But the right side of the brain is about emotion, and that's what people end up buying from. If, if you can figure out a way, hey, this is going to help me because it saves me time, that's what means something to a customer. Or you see a cell phone is thinner and lighter than ever before. That's a feature, that's not a benefit, so you'd say, so what to that? So the benefit of that it fits in your pocket more easily, it's easier to carry around, all of those things, those are the benefits. So, does anyone want to think about what they sell in their day-to-day -day business? Maybe what a feature is and what a benefit is. Does anyone want to shout one out? Sure, I sell phones. So, one of our features is we're efficient and convenient and flexible. Right. A benefit is that it saves the borrower Okay, perfect. And anyone, anyone else? Feature and a benefit. So we develop software. One of the things that, one of the features in my tools is that uh, you get a really powerful ad hoc query engine. The benefit to that is that you learn things about your business that you could not have Okay, great. It's one of the uh, we build uh, responsive, mobile-friendly websites. Uh, it's a feature, a benefit would be that it's going to look great on any device that the client is, is using. Great, excellent. So we just take, we're going to just take some random household items and think about the features of them and then what the benefits are. So again, on those index cards, if you want to just break up into threes or fours, and I'm just going to give each of you an item, and then you're going to list what a couple of the features are, two or three features, and then as many benefits as you can. At least three, maybe five benefits. So you have a paper clip to sell. And the next group, a banana. And so there's three groups here. A broom, an envelope, <laughs> a pen, <laughs> and the envelope back here, pen here, and a poster. So we had a paper clip. Yes, I got a paper clip. Oh, okay.
papers in your work um, very easily and it's fast and, fast and efficient and it's easy to find things and you can also quickly reorganize your papers um, where if you staple it you got to take the staple out and it's a real pain you lose time so this way here you pull the paper clip you reorganize your papers you reclip it and if you buy the colored ones you can organize things nice. by color that's great <laughs> you sold it good <laughs> And a banana. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a feature is the taste. The uh, benefit of that is that it's healthy. A uh, feature is the peel. The benefit is that it's clean. Um, a feature is that it's small, so it's, the benefit is it's travel friendly. Um, the feature is that it's inexpensive. The benefit is that it's affordable. Um, a feature is it has bright colors, so it's easy to find. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You can, you can cook with it. You can make banana bread, so it's versatile. Um, it's self-ripening, so there's preservation. Um, it's kid-friendly, so there's an ease of use there. Um, it's fast-acting as far as the vitamins and minerals, so it's this instant fuel. Uh, it's compostable, so it's eco-friendly. Um, and it comes in a bunch, so it's easy to transport. Are you in the banana business? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. That's very good. That's great. And the next one. I'm feeling very inadequate. <laughs> so we had a broom and uh, features it has a sturdy handle and the benefit it won't break. Uh, it has effective bristles so it sweeps well. It's small and light so it stores easily. Uh, very healthy, non-allergenic, colorful so it's easy to find. <laughs> Hey, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> there was no rules you said. No, that's me. That's actually the greatest. Those are the ones we That's great. That's not inadequate at all. Great. And the next was. We're actually all here to steal and borrow from each other anyway, so he actually did what he was supposed to do. That's right. What do you have? We have an envelope. <laughs> so, feature, um, they're opaque, so it protects confidentiality. Uh, the size can be geared to organize your stuff. Um, those envelopes with the no linking features uh, saves you time, saves you mess, saves you money by prolonging the life of the envelope. Uh, Tyvex envelope, uh, it protects the contents and it's easy to transport from one place to another. Excellent. All right, what about if you mail it and you can get a job? <laughs> <laughs> if you mail it, you can get a job. <laughs> there you go, pretty good. That's good. Okay. So we have a toaster. Toaster. Uh, so it'll heat your bread and that's a feature. The benefit is that it'll melt the butter for you. Uh, there are four slots to feature. The benefit is everyone gets breakfast. Uh, if it has an oven feature, that means you can have pizza for breakfast. And, it, uh, and if the oven breaks, your regular oven breaks, you can still have pizza for breakfast. Uh, I like pizza for breakfast. Uh, it has an alert when it's done toasting. That's so what? That's the feature, yeah. right? a little sound alert, and then that's better than using the smoke detector. Uh, and then it makes toast, and that's yummy. <laughs> there you go. Okay, all right. We are and not in the toaster. <laughs> and the final one, quite a stand-up for it. It's a prestige, yeah. It's good, that's great. Our pen has a comfortable grip, smoothly rolls across the paper, and is bright and works in the cold. 
which makes it less tiring for you. You can write longer without a break, without your hand cramping. Uh, your handwriting can be more legible when somebody needs to read it. Less time is wasted searching for your pen, and it's easily found and not lost because of its brightness. And it improves your, your efficiency so you don't miss the important information. Mm, excellent. <laughs> Does anyone see Wolf of Wall Street? Yes. So we know it, why he has to sell the pen. That I don't. All a, I remember is sell this pen to me. <laughs> right, exactly. That's, yeah. And that's a very used, when, when salespeople go on an interview, often the person in the interview will say, they'll just say, sell me this pen, and then they'll stop and just see what the person does. A part of it, what they're waiting for is to make sure that you're selling the benefits of the pen and not the feature. But the other part, they don't want somebody just to say, to launch into why you should buy the pen. And the very first thing you should do is not talk about the pen. You should be asking questions. Ask the person who's asked you that question, ask them what they're currently using. What do they use right now for pens? When do they typically use a pen? And all those questions, what it's helping you do, is put together, tailor a presentation after you gather the facts. And we'll look at that, because that gets into then the presentation. So what we're doing is we're slowly putting together, we're figuring out the features and benefits, the elevator pitch. We're just trying to piece this all together. And the presentation that we're coming on to next is really the core part of it. That's your goal to get to the presentation. And what we're going to do is just start by looking at what you shouldn't do in the presentation. And this is just a short video clip on a sales guy that really does everything completely wrong. And what I wanted you to do is just, when you're looking at it, just take notes on what you think he does wrong and what he maybe should be doing better. So we'll just take a look at this now. Hello, Mr. Johnson. It's Jim, isn't it? Can I call you Jim? Well, great, great. Um, look, Jim, thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy day to sit down with me today. Really, really appreciate it. You, you play golf? I play golf. We should, uh, we should get on the lake sometime, hit that ball around. And these are your children, I imagine. I've got two myself. Precious, precious little guys. Looks like we've got so much in common, you know? Like we could, we could be, uh, you know, um, brothers from a different mother or something, you know? Jimbo. <laughs> all right, all right. Now that we've, uh, we've gotten to know each other, let's uh, get down to business, shall we? Well, I... um, now, Jim, um, if you don't mind me asking, uh, uh, what keeps you up at night? You know, besides the, the little woman. <laughs> but she's a firecracker, huh? <laughs> Uh, no, no, but seriously, Jim, um, Consolidated Industries down the road is it's a very similar company to yours. And uh, Fred down at Consolidated couldn't sleep either. Um, and it wasn't because of his little woman either. <laughs> you know what I mean? You do know what I mean. All right. Now, Jim, we've, we've, uh, we've assembled a very aggressive proposal for you today. If you uh, take a look at page 124 here, you will see outlined a very attractive offer. Um, in the form of, of a deep 15% discount if we can get a firm, non-cancelable order from you today. What do you say? We got a deal? Uh, yeah. Jim, I can see that you are a, a shrewd negotiator, and, and I respect that. 25%. What do you say? 25%, Jim. Hey, Jim, you... this, is, this is a great deal. 25%. All we need is a non-cancelable firm order from you today. That's it. 25 Jim, you're letting me down, man. You are letting me down. Um, stay at the table, though. This is just beyond my, uh, my uh, approval uh, authority, so I'm gonna have to talk to my sales manager. Just give me a second. <clears throat> hey, yeah, I'm uh, down here with Jim. Yes, and he is a tough negotiator. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think we could get a deal if we could um, get him to about 50%. Um, yeah, no, no, I understand. Yeah, absolutely. 50%, not a percentage more. Agreed. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. Good news, Jim. Okay, here is my final offer. I have secured an unprecedented discount approval. Now, are you ready for this? 55%! No, wait, what? Think about this. We got a deal, Jim? We got a deal? Jim, we've got a deal? You don't... Uh, Jim! 
This is excellent news. Um, you know what? I will have the paperwork drawn up, sent over. We'll take care of it. Um, it has been a pleasure doing business with you today. Um, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let myself out here, and uh, maybe I'll look into uh, golf next weekend, weekend after. Uh, we'll set something up. It'll be great. That's it. Good doing business with you, Jimbo. You're a good man. So, Vladimir, how's my PC? Your PC is all fixed. You should be all set, Jim. Vladimir, thank you very much. By the way, who was that that just left? I have no idea. <laughs> so there were, there were a few things that weren't quite right. What, do you, uh, what are some of the things you felt he didn't do right at all? Find out who he talked to first. Right, that's not the biggest one. Yeah. Talked all the time. Right. No listening. So listening still pretty uh, non existent. It was inappropriate in his language and his talking about. Yeah, that's a good That's a really good one. Yeah, ran a rough shadow for most of the time. What other things? Didn't shake his hand when he came in or when he left. Right, and I don't. He didn't even say he didn't announce who he was. He you don't know what he did. Shake his hand when he made the deal. Right, right. <laughs> he used his phone. In right. Overpromised, unloyal. Right. And what about we were chatting in the break about price that he was just so eager to get the sale. <coughs> He was willing to drop price. I mean, the guy was handing said a word, and he's already dropping the price. He's going to 15%, 30%, and then 55%, which is a, another area that a salesperson can easily do, just so you get to get a sale. You don't hold that integrity to what your true value is. And ultimately, that's a better way to sell. It's, it's a tougher way, but if you can figure out a way to show the customer why even though you're more, why it costs more up front, why in the end it's worth doing. And that's something obviously he didn't try and do at all. Anything else you noticed in the, yes? The one good thing that was unquestionable was he did assume the sale. He <laughs> 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 follow up. <laughs> wasn't that's true. Yeah, he did. That's true. He didn't even knock walking in, first of all. He just walked his head in. Right. Point out him and right. Didn't come in standing up, bent over like that. That's, an, that's just a weird gesture. Well, he doesn't know who the decision maker is because he just didn't know the guy is the IT guy. Right. Well, and then he changed his name anyway. He called him Jimbo instead of Jim. Which would be oh, that's right, Jimbo. Right, to be overly familiar. The other thing, so he, he did this thing where, which is a good idea, but he didn't execute it well. When he talked about the golf game, you want to start by finding something in common. But if it's not going to be genuine, it's really not worth doing at all. He's trying to find some common ground. But then he just starts talking about himself, about why he likes playing golf. It's not about his golf game, it's about the guy genuinely interested, it's about his golf game. And you can say that, hey, I have an interest in golf too, but then it should be questions about his golf, not about yours, because he's not really interested in that. So that's another thing he uh, didn't do quite right. So when you're putting the presentation together, and we'll take a look at a better presentation after this, but when you think about what selling is, it's really not that different from what a doctor does. You'd never have a doctor that just walks in and tells you what's wrong with you. The only way a doctor can find out what's wrong is, is by what? It's by right listening, yeah, asking questions. So, right. <laughs> you got to stop that. <laughs> so, when you go to a prospect, being like a doctor, your job, and obviously, again, like a doctor, the, the prospect has some kind of pain. That's your job to uncover what the pain is and take it away. So you've got to A, find out what hurts, B, find out what's causing it, and then C, prescribe a cure. That's your job as a salesperson. So there's definitely a very strong analogy between what a doctor does and what a salesperson does. We talked about the, uh, the building rapport. It's very important, but it's got to be done in a, in a very genuine way. And then really the whole premise of a, of a presentation before you're giving your information on your product and your benefits is you've got to get gather information. So before you're saying anything to do with what you can offer, you're asking questions, you're listening, and you're getting that information, which as we said before, is building value and trust, which is what helps the sale, but it's also helping you enormously because every piece of information they're giving you, you can tailor your information. So you can be asking them, 
if, if it's a widget that you're looking to sell, you can say to him, what's important to you in a widget? Whatever he says next is really helping you define what your benefit, what the benefits are you're going to be. If he says color is what's important in the widgets, then you know if you have a nice array of colors, that's what you should be coming in on. And if he says color isn't important, don't even bring it up. You could have a list of 10 benefits, but some of them you don't even mention because you know they're not relevant. And the only reason you know that is because you've been asking questions and finding out. So once you have the information, then you can give your information, which is giving the benefits, matching the benefits to the needs. And we talked about this, but there's uh, the cherry tree is actually from the psychology of selling. If you get a chance to read that book, Brian Tracy, it's about a realtor that is showing a husband and wife a house that they're potentially interested in buying. And they're going up the pathway, and the salesperson, he's a very shrewd salesperson, he hears the wife, as they're walking up the pathway, stop, and she looks at a cherry tree in the, in the uh, front yard, and she stops, and she says, oh, that reminds me of when I was a girl, the house I lived in, we had a beautiful flowering cherry tree just like that. To a salesperson that's not in tune and listening, that could have just easily passed him by, but he heard that. What happened is he used that as a benefit to every room they went into. So they went into the kitchen, and the husband said, well, it's a, it's a nice kitchen, but it's a little bit small. The realtor replied by saying, you know, it is a compact kitchen, you can knock a wall down, but hey, take a look at this. When you look out the window, look at that beautiful flowering cherry tree. And he knows that that's the, it is the hope, exactly, that it's going to mean something. He's also very smart because he realizes that ultimately it's a woman that makes the decision. <laughs> <laughs> so they keep going through the house and they get to the living room and the husband says, well, this carpets are kind of old. They obviously need to be pulled up. And the realtor says, that's true. But hey, take a look at that. And he brings up again the flowering cherry tree. And the long and the short of it is they ultimately buy the house. And it's the, the flowering cherry tree. Even though they could have planted one, it's that that stood apart from everything else. And it's something that connected with, with, um, with the decision maker in terms of what she was looking for in a house. So it, to her, it brought up all the memories of her childhood. And all of that could have easily...